the, uh, the Muslims is changing as far as how when you was growing up. The type of people, so it was different from how it is now. Definitely, I didn't grow up as a Muslim, but my perception of Muslims was that the men were strong. They would do anything to protect their women and their family, and they were clean. These are things I remember thinking about Muslims, you know, in hindsight. Like, even then, I didn't know what a Muslim was, because at that time, I thought the Ansar was Muslim, <laughs> Nation of Islam was Muslim, Five Percenters was Muslim, Sunnis was Muslim. I didn't know all this stuff. So, in my mind, one thing that all of these different groups had in common was that they were clean, you know, that they were hardworking, that they, you know, they, they would protect their family, that they were intelligent. These are all, all things that I thought about Muslims before I became Muslim. And so now, me, being a Muslim and seeing a lot of the opposite, you know, for Muslims, Muslims not being clean, Muslims being ignorant, Muslims being coward, Muslims, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you think it got from that point to now? Because some people, they say, like, it was the elders, the elders just let it happen. Or not, yeah, this is something that it's the elders let it happen. No, nah, like the el not meaning the leaders, uh -huh. but our elders being the people that we look up to, just like dropping the ball at one time. My, I personally believe that it, it got that way because at, cert at a certain point in time, a lot of us, enough of us, were made to believe that being black and being Muslim were like oil and water. I mean, can't go together. And so and so our culture or or being who we were, you know, we, we, we took it out where even a lot of us, like even I got one imam in mind, right? I'm not gonna mention the name. You know, even when he talks he give a lecture, he talked with a Pakistani accent. He came <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's what I'm thinking about him because I remember I was walking down the street in Gambia, right? And there was a store, and they were playing a lecture, and it was him. I'm like, wow, so proud of that. They got no African <laughs> And it was him. But when he's talking, he talked with a Pakistani accent. Right? I'm like, why do you, you don't talk like that normally when you're talking person to person. Why do you feel like when you give a lecture, you got to have a Pakistani accent? So whether consciously or subconsciously, we felt like, you don't think that's our identity crisis? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Shadid talked about yeah. that. It's a void. It's a void. And because there's no such thing as a void. So when something, when we take something out, something necessary, something's yeah, going to come and place. fill that void. Yeah, yeah. And you see, if you look at the pseudo-Islamic movements as well as the Sunni Islamic movements that didn't run away from being who they were, you see when enough of us, you know, felt like, it was haram or it was asabiyah to acknowledge who you were. This when you see all that corruption coming. This way you see Muslims being cowards. This way you see Muslims not running away to drug deals from the block. This way you see in all the marriage hustles and dowry hustles and all that. Before that, brothers were accountable to the community. You couldn't just, you know, sister, I give you uh, volume one of Saeed Bukhari as your mom. As your mom. <laughs> just <Yeah>. volume one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you don't even give it to her, then you know, you know, uh, okay, you want a divorce? Yeah, okay, ask me for a color, I give it to you. All right, well, I never gave you the Bakari, the volume one, so, you know, I don't have to give it to you because you have to ransom yourself, so we eat it. Right? <laughs> type stuff like that. That type of stuff wasn't happening before, though, that type of understanding came in. So, you know, that void opened the door for all the type of corruption that Islam saved us from. For a lot of us, Islam saved us from hustling women and being corrupt and doing all of these kind of things. But when those deviant movements came in and said, it's haram to be who you are, then at the same time, you see the door of corruption come in and we just take, we embrace all the jahiliyyah that we left, but we just put an Islamic name on it and say it's halal. That's my opinion. I'm not. I'm not uh, inclined to speak about Islamic affairs. Well, I, I just say to be fair, it's nonsense on both sides of the fence. You know what I mean? I, I think. I think. I think that's a fair uh, assessment. You know what I mean? Is to is to acknowledge, to to highlight, or to pinpoint, or, or to, to, to 
point the uh, on both sides of what? On both sides of the fence. Uh, what what fence? What are you saying? See, <laughs> what you talking I'm, about? I'm not in. I'm I'm not gonna speak about Islamic affairs because I'm, I'm. He's Rodney I'm, King. Is basically what he's saying. <laughs> Go ahead. No, nah, I'm really trying to be a bridge because at the end of the day, like. I don't care what hey, you man. say that I don't care what you say that you're playing, right? If you say that you're Sufi or if you say that you're Salafi or if you say you're Akla Sunni Wajimad or you say you Sunni or whatever it is that you claim, right? At the end of the day, we still have not taken what is supposed to be the cure, right? The Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was salam, and extracted the benefit from it as it applies to us specifically as a as a as a people as a culture of uh, indigenous people here in the United States with social economic problems with mental problems with drugs and we haven't we haven't fixed those problems i don't care what side of the fence that you claim you know what i'm saying we haven't done why work. don't you care because it's I feel like at this point it's irrelevant. Like what? What? I want to speak from a position of my nafs and not speak from a position of knowledge. So I'm not going to speak about Islamic issues. No, I'm not what saying. I'm saying is from a from a standpoint of society. You know what I mean? When you just look at society in a general in a general context, how long has Islam been here in the United States within the African American and Hispanic communities? And we still have not eliminated some of those problems and issues that you talk about. I don't care what side of the fence you claim. There's problem. There's problematic issues on both sides of the no, fence. No, you you but right see, that's about the that. Thing, because Islam amongst African Americans have been in the United States since the 20s and the 30s. Yes, I'm talking about even soon, quote unquote. Yeah. Yes. Right? yes, right. But if you look at those different communities. They always dealing with those problems. Like if you even deal with the Dar Islam, mm -hmm. you deal with the Islamic Party, you mean what the Muhammad's community, whether we agree with any of those communities or not. If you look at all of those communities in their heyday, they was dealing with those issues. You know, they had prison outreach programs, they had stores, mm -hmm. they had communities, they had housing, they had security companies. They were addressing those issues, but you know. When the other side got involved and invalidated all of that stuff. Exactly. That's, that, that's why I said it, why, that it matters. That's exactly why I was saying it matters. At the end of the day, the social issues that we have, they not never, I ain't going to say never, but we're going to always have social issues, right? The, the, the other issue of like what side you claim and all that, that would, it's not even like what side do you pick? You can only pick from two things that are valid. You understand what I'm saying? But if something's not valid, you ain't picking, you're deviating. Here's what here's what I'ma say about my, <laughs> here's what I'ma say about myself. Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me to grow and learn enough to say I don't know. Or to take a position to 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 whereas whereas in my past I may have been uh I may have been argumentative or I may have, yeah. you know what I'm saying, stood toe to toe with people that that I had no business even standing toe to toe with them, you know, on Islamic issues or issues of knowledge or Aikido or fit or whatever the case may be. I'm I'm not doing that because I, I haven't put in the time and the work and the and the effort necessary in order to first of all be qualified to even talk about Certain issues, so I I thank Allah for right. allowing me to grow as a human. Let me ask you this then: to say to know where my position is at. Let me ask I'm you this: I'm just talking about social economic issues. I got a degree in business and economics. I could talk about that. I earned that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah, but let me, let me ask you this now, right? Aside, I ain't trying to deviate from your point, but if you you could say, all right, if I haven't reached that that level where I can talk about those things. I haven't reached that level where I can talk mm -hmm. about that. So here's the talk about it. No, 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 no. I don't I talk. Not to talk listen. About no, it. listen. No. I don't ignore things. Because I'm not ignoring Let me finish either. what I'm saying. It exists. The, the order, we all have an order. We've been ordered 
that if you don't know, you follow those who know, right? Yes. That that's it. So that's what I do. I, it's not. I talk about what the people I follow talk about, and who I follow. I'm not talking about yo. I follow you, man. I guess you could say vice versa. I, I would say that. I would say that the same. My, my, the point I'm making to you is If I was to make a statement I would make a statement that would be rooted in The people that I follow I.e. Shadid or Mufti Or something like that You know what I mean and So that's my point So at the end of the day If you're gonna And I'm not saying nothing about Shadid or Mufti I'm just saying that You're supposed to we follow, that's, that's the whole point of having a meth hat You see what I'm saying? No no. So you follow the, the following somebody. Yeah, you're following you're somebody. Like somebody. It's yeah. about are you gonna follow somebody who's valid or not valid? Yeah. That, that that's my whole point. You expound, you're the email. <laughs> I can't add nothing to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's my point. Oh, about uh give going overseas, give a fine folk. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Is that like the reason why I say that is because a lot of people don't know the conditions. They're not familiar with how America operates. And if me and CJ talk about this a lot of times, that they need they need to be something in America, like a thing in America. Yeah, uh, Imam Nawawi has a book called Adabi Mufti Fatwa and Wamusta. The mannerisms of the Fatwa, the one asking the Fatwa and the one giving the Fatwa, something like that. And in it, he says, it is not permissible for a person to give a fatwa unless he knows the conditions of the people, the language of the people, and that, in, and he said that includes their slangs and, and things like this. And so uh, I'm, I'm probably misquoting and summarizing it, but many of the scholars who dealt with the issue, they say, this, they say something similar. Because we're, a lot of us are common people. We don't, we don't know that there's prerequisites, you know, we don't know all these things. So is is one crime, is one sin that we would ask someone like that for a fight. But it's, I think it's a greater crime that that sheikh or that scholar who should know that would give his fatwa because he, he, he knows better. So those fatwas, the scholar sheikh shouldn't have given them. And even if he is, even, even if, he did give them, is they're not buying them. What about, because this is like a major question that can ask too is Islam and culture. Does Islam take away from culture? Because people be like. No, Islam is like a filter. Islam filters the culture. So, in other words, if you can visualize it, picture, you know how sometimes you get flour or something like that and you put it through like a screen, like a filter. Mm -hmm. Picture the screen or that thing being Islam. And the flour or whatever you're trying to sift is the culture. Whatever's haram is going to get caught up in that in, in that screen, in that filter. And whatever's left, that's what remains of your culture. So that's what Islam does. That's my thing. It's like, where, like where does mentality come from? Like, say, you like, man, I'm getting my enemies some flour. And they're like, oh, you imitating the kufar. You're like, bro, just get us some flowers. <laughs> like, man, you imitating them. What's going on with they doing? And I think, like, that needs to be elaborated on because what constitutes that, that I'm actually imitating the Kufar? People, is it in, like, belief or is it action? It's, it's one thing that you can't uh, get around. And I see people on both sides. Because you know that hadith that says... Uh, who imitates the people out there? Meant the shepherd the common for a minute. He who imitates the people are from him. That hadith is in Abu Dawood and it's in the book of dress. Kitab Right? And so the, 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 the issue is more nuanced than what a lot of people believe. Some people try to say, oh, so you're saying, okay, so, haha, you try to say everything is imitating the kufar. Uh, the kufar wear pants, so I can't wear pants. It, it doesn't mean it's a little bit more nuanced than that. <laughs> like, I just give you an example, and you find this in books like the Shema'il of Imam Tirmidhi. Mm. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived in Mecca, he would comb his hair and part it because the people in Mecca would braid their hair. The Mushrikeen would braid their hair. Yeah. 
when he made Hijra to Medina, he would uh, braid his hair. Because Akhla uh, Kitab, the Jews in Medina, would uh, uh, part their hair and, and, and let it hang. Or well, vice versa, I forget. But the, the, the lesson from that is that it's not like some big general thing. Okay, the Kufar have hair, so now I got cut all my hair. No, it don't mean that. It, it, it's just that you see within the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's biography that he tried to distinguish himself from the disbelievers. And that's just one example with how he styled his hair. So it, that's not a general thing. One thing he did in Mecca, he did the opposite of Medina. Because the majority of the disbelievers were doing one thing in Mecca, and so he did the opposite, the vice versa, in Medina. Uh, also, we learn that the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wrapped his imam, uh, we learn this, it's mentioned in one of the books of the Shaykh, uh, uh, Ikhya al-Sunnah wa Ikhmad al the revival of the Sunnah and the destruction of innovation. He, he goes on, in his book of dress in that, in that book, he talks about how, uh, and he mentions a narration of how, you know, what I call a tale, the part of the turban that you leave oh, hanging, yeah, yeah. how you can leave, the, you can let, there's yeah, narration yeah. to say that you can have it hanging over your back, oh, hanging right. on the front shoulder, yeah. whatever, or under your chin, yeah. and with the, with the tail hanging in the back. Well, what he what he says is uh, is is discouraged is not having a tail, tucking both ends of the turban up, because the people of Luke would tie their turbans like that. And so this teaches us number one that is is not just the concept of wearing a turban, but even how you wear the thing. And and this teaches that the people of Luke wore turbans. It wasn't just so called Arab thing, right? But we we have given guidelines or parameters of how we should wrap it. And one of the reasons why we don't wrap it with both ends tucked in is because the people of Luke were in turbans like that. So I think I think a lot of people miss the subtleties and the nuances with regards to imitating the people. I think, this is my opinion, right? Yeah. I think that when people read Hadith, they, they don't know the history of it. Like you wouldn't know the history of the Ayah or the Azbab of the mm -hmm. and they just take it and run with it mm. and just use that as a stick to just chop people down. And exactly. you're like, well, wh why did he say that? And when did he say it? And what was the reason for him saying it at that particular time? And you're like, was it circumstantial or was it, you know, like... And you have to know all of that before you comment on it. Yeah. It's like Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, uh -huh. he, that some Qadrik uh, Qawadis were with him and, and they were saying the hukum was only for Allah. And he said, Kalimatul Haq, what you read to be Habatim. He said, "What the, the statement is literally true, but what you intend by it is complete yeah, yeah, falsehood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he bought the book. They said, we want to judge by the Quran, so he, and not man. And he brought them a book. Yeah. And he said, go ahead, judge, speak, <laughs> like speak. And they was like, you know that can't speak. And he like, exactly, that's why they have men like me to convey. So <laughs> It, it just shows the audacity. Look who they're arguing with. Ali Ibn Abi Talib. I know. <laughs> but, no, no, because in that case, it's different because you got to also realize that Islam wasn't as broad as how it is now. People can go on the internet and find out who Ali Ibn Abi Talib was. Yeah. He was just a name known in a particular area. In this other area, we it ain't reaching them like it would reach us. Yeah. So they knew. So some of them was just getting the information that they was getting. I said something similar. A couple of weeks ago in the Juma Kutba, I was talking about Uthman. Like the people rose up against Uthman, Ibn Affan, Radi Lam Tala Like, I'm sure these, these, these people thought they were doing something yeah, righteous. That's, yeah, that's you don't know who this man is. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Yeah, and they was all, like, all the way, what? Some of them was from Egypt. Egypt, some most of them was from Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of different for. That would be somebody you would call like the new shot. He's like, yeah. no, they really don't know. Yeah. But the problem was with seeing some of the Sahara's in it. And then it was like, oh no. 